Okay. Um, I actually want to get started on time if other individuals show up while I'm um while I started then I'll just let them in. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and get started. One second. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay. So how you guys doing? My name is Gilbert. And I'd like to welcome you guys to Strategies for Success. Uh, this is ways to increase your potential to pass um, and decrease your stress uh, and decrease the stress of studying. So, uh, you know, real quick in the chat box, just let me know where you guys are watching from. You know, uh, I've been doing this for a few weekends now and been getting people from Texas, from um California, from New Orleans. So just give me a, a, a quick in the chat box where you're from um, so we can get an idea of you know, how far this, this, this uh, profession spans. All right, thank you for that. Um, so well, let me just check some real quick. Sorry about that. So we got New York, okay. Miami. Wow, Miami. Texas again. Yeah, it's a it's a lot going on in Texas. Yes, there. Vegas. I was just out there. I was both in Texas and Vegas. Nice. Okay. That's what's up. We need y'all all over. Cool. All right. So, like I said, once again, strategies for success. Listen, um, I really appreciate you guys for joining me here today. And if you stick around to the end, um, I know I said you said uh, for, uh, in, the, in the beginning when you, when you guys signed up, but I'll give you another bonus if you stick with me to the end. Okay. So my name is um, Gilbert Bell, and I'm a licensed master social worker and a credential alcohol and substance abuse counselor. Uh, I've been practicing uh, substance abuse for 10 plus years. And I'm a recently licensed social worker. Um, but like I said, I've been in the field for 10 plus years. So um, I have grown a passion for helping individuals pass this exam because I learned some things about myself when I took my exam the first time and I failed. So I decided to take it upon myself to help my colleagues uh, look at some things differently uh, when they take the test, whether it be for the first, second, or third time. So that's another thing I want you guys, real quick in the chat, just tell me if this is your first, second, third, ninth time taking a test. Let me know so uh, we can give people an idea, you know, that sometimes you got to take it more than once. So first, first. No, you ain't 10. You <laughs> um, First, okay. All right, nice. So that's, that's great um, because I really want you guys to succeed on your first time. And um, just a quick story, like, you know, my first time, uh, I failed by one point. And later on in this webinar, I get to, how that happened. I don't want that for you because it's crushing, you know, but you got to keep pushing, got to keep going. So let's just keep going. So in this webinar, uh, we're going to learn what type of questions are on the exam. Uh, we're going to learn how to break down questions and we're going to learn how, uh, what's the best strategies for answering qualifying word questions. I'm going to give you guys one practice question and then I'm going to give you some of my test taking tips. If that's cool with you, just give me a thumbs up in the chat box. I appreciate it. Okay. 
So I just want to make sure you guys are ready for this profession because, uh, you know, I find this so realistic and so funny. Uh, you know, this is what uh, my friends think I do. Uh, this is what my mom think I do. This is what my clients think I do. Uh, this is what uh, people think I do. This is what I think I do. Uh, this is what I really do. So, you know, just get ready for it. Social work is a lot of paperwork. Them, them progress notes can be a killer. So you might want to stay, stay on top of that. But it's a lot of fun and it's a really rewarding, a rewarding profession. So, you know, just get ready. So I get a lot of uh, comments and messages uh, asking me um, what kind of questions are uh, uh, on the uh, ASWB uh, exam. And, you know, I've done answered it so much that sometimes I get kind of smart addictly. Uh, smart alecky and I'm kind of a, a you know a wise ass excuse my language but I started saying you know questions about social work um you know because it, it's not that much obvious but on a serious note is is more than questions about social work so uh the exam is structured to test your cognitive skills and your ability to uh, reason through questions in order to identify the correct answer. So you know that um, there are four different uh, content areas that cover multiple uh, competencies, which include like things like uh, human development, diversity and behavior, um, and the environment um, assessment and intervention planning, um, interventions with client and client systems, uh, professional relationships, values, and ethics. Um, so more of what type of questions are on the exam is more like um, there are three variants of questions on the exam. Um, and before we get to that, just know that, you know, it gets four levels of uh, the ASWB exam. The exams consist of 170 questions. Um, sorry, let me just let somebody in. Um, only 150 of the questions are scored um, and 20 are pretest questions. If you don't know what that means, that means they put 20 questions to gauge uh, the competency or the level of advancement of the field. So they put questions in there to see if social workers are consistently learning. Uh, you know, things change. They don't always remain the same. Um, I know a lot of our teachings are pretty much you know, uh, throughout history, same thing, but there are some things that change over time. So they just put questions up there to see how much you know about the advancement of the field. Um, there's no way to tell the difference between uh, the pretest questions and the real questions. So one variant of the questions is uh, recall questions, right? Uh, recall Questions are based on facts and information that you can recognize or remember from your educational career, um, readings, or trainings. In my opinion, these are one of the easiest, or these are the easiest questions to answer um, on the exam. Why? Because we spend so much time studying and trying to remember, uh, and we just spent, whether you just got out of school or not, just spent all these years learning the same things that we need to recall. So just know, in my opinion, recall questions are the easiest for me. Um, another variant are application questions, right? So application questions take what you learn uh, from reading materials and they want you to apply it to a case scenario. So they want you to recall facts, analyze the case scenario, um, and then Ask what should the social worker do in this situation? So um, this would be like uh, a client is suffering, uh, is, ha is having a, a manic episode, has to be sent to the hospital. What type of medication would he be prescribed? So let's say for bipolar, he had a bipolar manic episode, got sent to the hospital. What type of medication would be prescribed? So you know that it's only certain medication that's subscribed that is subscribed for bipolar. If those are one of the answer choices, 
then that's what you would choose. Uh, so that's basically application. Another variant, and the last variant is reasoning. So reasoning uh, requires you to use critical thinking and it's case-based. So these questions, they're lengthy and they may, in, uh, they may include a, a lot of information that's a, that is irrelevant. So you'll see these long questions with a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of that information is you know, just there to, as filler. Um, they want you to think about the best approach to the situation uh, presented in the case scenario. So this would be like, um, is it an ethical issue? Is it a safety issue? Is it a competency issue? Um, what, what is the best response to what's going on in the question? That's what they want you to think about. And I always say, think about it like this. What does the perfect social worker look like? Somebody who follows the every rule to the T and is so perfect, like uh, almost like a Jesus. You know, what would Jesus do? That's how I think of it. That's how I put it up front. And it may work for you. You could try it. But what would the perfect social worker do? Um, another thing is to look out for is like, this is what the majority would do. I know a lot of you guys work for uh, organizations, agencies or you may be interning uh, somewhere and they do things a certain way or a question reminds you of a situation that you've been in, you don't want to answer that question on the exam based on that experience that you've been through or the way that the agency or the organization that you work for handles things, all right? This is more general, like, what would the uh, majority of the field do in this situation? So now we want to look at how to break down questions, right? If you, um, oh, so real quick, if you get value out of this out of this so far, just give me a thumbs up in the chat. I appreciate it. If I'm moving too fast, uh, let me know. Um, but give me a thumbs up if you're getting value so far, and I appreciate that. Um, how to break down questions, right? So there are uh, many techniques to breaking down questions. Um, they may include like using acronyms, uh, what's the things, mnemonics, or, you know, I have one time I, do, I did storytelling. Um, but when you think about it, it's one simple solution that we've been using since grade school that we can use to help us break down questions. And that's the who, what, where, when, and why method, right? So first we want to ask ourselves who, right? Who am I? What part do I play in this scenario? Uh, am I a broker? Am I an advocate? Am I a case manager? Am I an educator? Am I a facilitator? So we want to know who are we? Who is the social worker, right? Next, we want to know who is the client, right? Is it a male? Is it a female? Is it a transgender? Is it a, a, a family? Is it a couple? Um, is it somebody of a different ethnicity or a different cultural background? Like, we want to look at the, these things when we're looking at the question. Who, who am I? Who is the client? Right? So then we want to say what? What is the presented problem? Uh, why are we meeting with the client? Uh, what are they reporting to us? Or what has been reported to us as the social worker in that scenario? Um, uh, we also want to look at uh, what is the question asking me to do, right? Does it want me to use critical thinking? Uh, does it want me to educate? Does it want me to listen? Um, does it want me to make an informed decision? So, we definitely want to look at what uh, the presented problem is and what is the question asking me to do. Um, from there, we want to look at the when. Uh, when did the presenting issue, problem, or concern uh, start? Uh, when did onset begin? How long has the client been experiencing symptoms? Uh, an example of this would be like somebody uh 
somebody with uh, bipolar, right? So bipolar one involves a person who um, must have had at least one full-blown manic episode in the past uh, 12 months, in the last 12 months. They had to have a full-blown uh, manic episode. Compared to a person with bipolar two, uh, this involves a major depressive uh, episode lasting two weeks and at least one uh, hypomanic episode. So 12 months, two weeks would give us a time frame as to when uh, onset occurred or when problems started occurring, which would help us choose uh, the, a better answer, whether it be one bipolar one or bipolar two, right? So we want to know when. Moving on, we want to know where, right? Where are we meeting uh, the client? Are we in the office? Are we in the school? Are we at a treatment agency? Are we in a hospital? Uh, a social worker meeting with a student is going to have different contexts from a social worker meeting with somebody in the hospice, right? So we want to know uh, where are we in the therapeutic uh, relationship, the therapeutic alliance? Are we in the beginning? Is this engagement? Are we building rapport? Uh, are we in the middle and we're practicing uh, uh, maintenance, you know, or helping the client through a, a lapse or relapse? Um, are we at the end? Is this discharge? Did I bump into a client outside of work? So we want to know where are we in the therapeutic alliance? Where are we meeting? Okay. Next, we want to know the why. Why is the help of the social worker needed? Uh, why are the clues um, in this question given to me? So you're going to see stuff like qualifying words, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And you're going to see like words, maybe in italic, words in quotation marks. Why are they giving me this? What are they trying to hint at? So we definitely want to look at uh, why. Why? What is my part that I'm playing in this case scenario? And I have to make this decision based on these answers. Okay. So real quick, uh, how to answer qualifying word questions. Um, this is uh, not too extensive, right? Because many questions on the exam contain keywords that are extremely important and they determine the correct from the incorrect answers. So these words are identified as qualifying words. And when they're present, they're the most important um, factors to consider when selecting between answers. Uh, when we identify qualifying words, examples would be like best, next, least, most, first, and not. Uh, these words are usually capitalized in bold letters, but not all the time, and are often at the end of the question. Um, right, so a trick that I use when it comes to these questions is... Um, taking the qualifying word and placing it in front of each, each answer choice and then uh, reading that qualifying word with the answer choice, which helps me better clarify what they're asking or uh, what would be the best choice for me to make. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I do with a qualifying word. I, I put it in front of the word. It helps me better understand and identify what the best answer choice would be. So, all right, we're going to do a practice question, right? When I give you this practice question, um, after I read it, of course, decide what you want your answer to be. But also, I want you to identify the who, what, when, where, why. You don't have to put all of them. Just identify what you think is a who or what or where to where or why, you know, in the sake of time. And, you know, we're going to take it from there because we're going to really break this question now. So 
a family comes to see you, uh, a family comes to see a social worker as their relationships have become strained. Uh, the teenage son has a group of good friends but never brings them home and spends most of his time in his room. The parents engage in destructive patterns of fighting that usually results in them not speaking to each other. The family is experiencing financial difficulties due to underemployment and the son uh, threatens to leave the family leave the house if things do not get better. In order to best assist the family, the social worker should A, model effective communication strategies that can be used by family members. B, begin individual counseling with the son to assist him with dealing with the stress in the household. C, help the parents look at additional work to alleviate their financial demands. Or D, determine the outcomes uh, desired by the family to assist them with prioritizing their concerns. So identify the who, what, when, when, and why, what your correct answer is, and even what type of question you think this is. All right? So you have to get too crazy. Like I said, you, if you identify the who's, then put that. If you identify the what, the where, the why, put that, you know, and tell me what type of question you think this is. Let me give you guys a few minutes for that. All right, so um, when we start to break this question down, right, and we say the who, the what, the where, and the why, so in yellow, uh, I've identified the who, right? So if you said that the family is the who, then you were correct. So the family comes to see a social worker as their relationships have become strained. So that's the what. Relationships have become strained. The teenage son has a group of friends, but they but he never brings them home, and he spends most of his time in his room. He spends his time in his room. That's a what? Uh, isolation. The parents, the who, engage in destructive patterns of fighting that usually result in them not speaking to each other. A what? Um, the family is experiencing uh, financial difficulties due to underemployment. The son threatens to leave the house. Uh, things do not get better. In order to best assist the family, the social worker should. So uh, did you guys put your answer in the chat? I ain't seen no answers yet. I'm working off my phone for the first time, but I, I would say it would be D. Okay. As in dog. Okay, I got a D. I got two Ds, three Ds, a C. Okay. Okay, so it looks like the uh, majority is D. Another D popped up, okay. All right. So with that being said, I want you guys to look out for something else in, in these uh, answer choices. Uh, they will more than likely give you at least two answer choices that are distractors right but when you break down the question you can easily easily identify the distractors um it's hard to figure out it should address immediate okay that's a good point so look when we identify the who the what the where and the why it makes it so much easier to break down i mean to uh eliminate distractors right so the first one, the who is the family. We got to know that any choice that doesn't involve the family is out of there, right? Because that's they're the client. The family is the client. So 
which two would be the distractors? B and C. Okay. We got a B and C. Anybody agree with that? Just give me a thumbs up. It's cool. Agree. All right. So. I'm sorry. Give me a sec. <laughs> so exactly. The two uh, distractors was B and C. Why? Because let's go back real quick. B, begin individual counseling with the son to assist with dealing with stress in the household. This only addresses the son, right? C, help the parents look for additional work to alleviate financial demands. This only addresses the parents. So if everybody get what, excuse me, get what they want, then yes, those get eliminated. Now, between A and D, when I look back in the chat and I see you guys' answers, um, I don't see anybody say A, so I guess, are these always two distractors? Um, I'm not going to say it's always two. I'm sorry. Somebody asked, are there always two distractors? I'm not going to say it's always two, but you're more than likely to get two. Um, so when I look back in the chat, uh, Nobody chose A. Everybody went with D. So uh, A, model effective communication strategies that can be used by the family. Uh, D, determine outcomes desired by the uh, family to assist with prioritizing their concerns. And I would say you guys are absolutely correct with D. Um, determine outcomes desired by the family to assist with prioritizing their concerns. Uh, this is an application question. Uh, because it deals with uh, family systems and the family system approach argues that in order to understand um, family systems, a social worker must look at the family as a whole uh, rather than focusing on um, the individual members, right? So the social worker can best assist by determining uh, the expectations of the family members, which in regard uh, to treatment outcomes. So it's basically saying if um, if all the members are not focused on achieving the same results, then it's less likely that change will occur. So, um, you know, as I get ready to wrap up, um, I have a few more uh, things I want to give you guys. But first, I want to give you guys uh, uh, what I think are eight great test taking tips. Um, and starting with that, the first one is pace yourself. You know, when you guys are taking this test, you definitely want to pace yourself. Um, you don't want to read through the questions too fast. Um, you want to take your time, read the questions, make sure you understand the question. Um, but try not to spend too much time on the question. And um, I would say that goes into the second tip, which is practicing time management, because you definitely want to move at a pace that uh, is uh, comfortable for you, one, but not too fast, not too slow. It, you, have to be, you have to understand that it should only take you between one to three minutes between each question. Um, some questions are easier than others, so that's why it would be like one minute or less. Some are a little lengthy, so it would probably take you like three minutes or Maybe more, but it should take you three minutes. Three minutes is a long time. And I say this, going back to what I told you guys in the beginning, my first exam, um, I'm there. I, I believe I'm moving at a steady pace. And next thing I know, this big block pops up on the screen that says you have 15 minutes left. My, I went into panic mode. Like, I couldn't believe that I was almost out of time in four hours. I couldn't believe four hours passed that fast. So I had about, I want to say, maybe seven to 10 questions left. And because I, that block popped up, I just started, you know, freaking out. I answered the questions. And I think, in my opinion, that was the uh, factor in why I failed the first time, because I failed by one point. And I think it was because those last 10 questions 
I went into panic mode. So I want to say practice time management because you don't want to get there. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are dealing with some form of anxiety about taking this test and you don't want that to pile on, to, on top of that anxiety. Which takes me into my third tip, which is manage your anxiety. If you feel that you are, um, you're a bad test taker, I really hate to hear people say that because the more you tell yourself that, the more it becomes true. But if you feel you're a bad test taker or you get nervous when you're under pressure, find ways to help you alleviate that, whether it's, being, whether it's doing something before your exam doing something during your exam, or just getting to the root of why are you, what, what's causing your anxiety, you know, because that could be a deep-rooted issue also. Um, but you might want to find it out because you can better manage it once you realize what's going on with you. Um, a great tip is to get to know your testing center. So if you are able to take a ride, walk, stroll, jog, down to your testing center, see what it looks like, walk inside, see what the procedure is like so that when test day come, it doesn't feel like uh, pressure, it doesn't feel strange. I, I learned this tip my second time around because I remember the first time I went, I was so just nervous just walking in the building, just you know, oh, I got to give you my ID. Oh, I got to sit here. Oh, I go here. And it just, I was so nervous in just that part of it. The second time I walked, and I went to a completely different testing center the second time, I walked in like I owned the place. You know, it was like, hey, how you doing? Yo, hey, how's it going? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You know, because I had got comfortable with the procedure. And it made the process so much easier. So I would say, Definitely go get to know your testing center so does, it doesn't feel like unfamiliar territory. Um, take breaks. If, if you know you can't sit still, a lot of us can't, can't sit still for four hours. If you can't concentrate for four hours, take a break. Stand up. They'll let you pause the test. Take a stretch. Get all the jitters out. Do what you got to do. Um, but do it and don't just sit on it. Don't sit there knowing that you need to stand up and you just like, you know, you're forcing yourself to try to finish the test. Take advantage of those breaks. The only thing I don't think you can do is take a bathroom break. Um, yeah, I don't think they let you take, I, I can't remember that part or not, but I don't think they let you take bathroom breaks. This is a huge one. If you are the type of person that goes to study and you get all your books and you get your pads and you get everything and you sit down and you do more scrolling on your phone than you do page turning in your book, get a study partner. Get somebody that's going to hold you accountable and that you can hold accountable and concentrate on getting your studying done. Because you could take any course, you could take any group, you could listen to my webinar. But if you're not studying and you're not retaining the information, it's going to be really hard for you to pass this exam. And I would say, find somebody who can hold you accountable, that keeps you grounded and keeps you in one place for an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever y'all decide. Find that person get, uh, and y'all handle your business. All right? Don't 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 play yourself. Talk about you got this, and you know you don't because you're gonna be on TikTok, Instagram, the whole time. All right. Super important. Know the uh, NASW code of ethics. Why do I say this? Because majority of the exam is based around these codes. They want to know that you are competent. They want to know that you are ethical in all your decision making. Majority of this test is based around the code of ethics. And that's not directly asking you what's this code. That's they build in a case scenario where 
when you go back to the code of ethics, it's going to help you choose the right choice. Make sure you, you study these. Make sure you brush up on them. Make sure you have them on cap as far as these codes govern the behavior of the profession. So it's going to make, a, uh, make it a lot easier to answer these questions. And the final thing is trust your gut. I don't, uh, I don't know how long you spent in school, uh, how long you know, you've been away from school, but if you know, you know. You spent all that time doing the work. This exam is just like any other exam that you took to make it this far. You know your stuff or you wouldn't be sitting or eligible to sit for this exam. Uh, don't go start second guessing yourself. Don't start changing your answers. Trust your gut. You know the work. You got this. Right? So I wanted to show you guys this because to me, this is uh, this is uh, motivating and inspirational, right? So this is the total number of exams administered in 2020 in the past week. And this was put out in 2021. So as in regards to the associates exam, there were 250 uh, exams administered. They had a 77.6% pass rate, right? Okay, so what can't you see? You can't see what I'm showing you now? Yes. Can you see it? Yes, now I see it. Okay. Um, so, uh, like I said, the associates, 250 uh, exams administered, a 77.6 pass rate. For bachelors, 2,696 exams administered, a 68.5% pass rate. Look at the master's. 16,698 exams administered, a 75.4%, uh, almost half percent, uh, percent pass rate out of 16,000, 75%. Like, if something costs you $16,000, $698, and they gave you a 75% discount, are you going to take that? Like, those are awesome numbers. Advanced generalists, 134 exams. Over half of this 134 passed this exam, 64.2%. And look at clinical, because that's the next step. Same thing, 16,776 exams administered, almost a 75% pass rate. I want you to tell me why this can't be you. Like, why you can't be this stat? You should be this stat. The numbers they put out in 2022, 2023 uh, should be you. So just know that you got this because look at the pass rate. All you have to do is follow the steps, trust your gut, study. You're going to do this. All right? Just want you guys to know that. So... I don't, I don't charge for my webinar. I don't ask for money for my content or nothing. However, I do have um, uh, uh, an online store where I sell digital content and I do sell apparel. If you want to support, you can support that way. Right now, I'm offering my exam preparation ebook, the content study uh, sub subject tracker, subject study tracker. Uh, this has over 50 pages of note taking. Um, it covers the 11 competency sections to focus on specific topics and you're able to organize your study material all in one place. So when you guys leave here, you're going to get an email from me that's, you know, thanking you and everything. And it's also going to give you a, a guy's opportunity to order this book or whatever from the store. Uh, and I'm going to give you guys 20% off just because you attended this, just because you came to my webinar 
uh, use code success, you get 20% off this book or your complete order. Uh, with, if you order anything out of the store 365 digital downloads in apparel. Um, with that being said, before I wrap this up, if you guys have any questions, you can put it in the chat box or you can, um, you can say it right now and I'll, I'll answer it. Okay, so if you guys got if you guys got value out of this, please uh, uh, leave a comment. Please put a thumbs up. Please let somebody else know. You know because I do these on Wednesdays and Sundays, and I just want to give you guys something to take with you moving forward into the exam. If you have any further questions, you can always email me or direct message me. Uh, my email and my um. My direct message is on my website where you guys signed up at. Thank you for attending because trust and believe I get so hyped when you guys sign up for this um, because I want to help you guys get to this next level. It's so much fun. Um, it's a great journey and I know you worked hard for it and you deserve it. So thank you guys. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up and let's say keep watching. Thank you. Bye. No problem. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye.